you guys, this is Rob from Gay Guy Plays, and today we're going to do a little bit of min-maxing when I give you a couple tips and tricks on how to optimize Octavia's melodies. Now before we begin, I do have a bit of a disclaimer because I'm going to kill all of the fun out of the whole mandacord thing, at least for the first little bit of the segment, mainly because we're running percentages, we're running numbers, and we're going to look at it from a really analytical point of view. That does not mean that I don't love good music, however, I know that there is a good part of the community that really likes to know the numbers and kind of like the mechanics of how things work, and in this channel I've been a very big proponent of taking the min-maxing acts best and the fun aspect of it and kind of merging them together to make a bit of a baby because you can be both. You can both min-max and have fun at the same time. So please hold all of your comments about the fact that I'm killing the arts because I love the arts, it's just that sometimes I'm not good enough to keep the rhythm of some special art out there. So with that said, let's jump on in. So let's cover percussion and bass very quickly because they are super, super simple. Basically, all they do is pulse out damage per beat. The less beats you have, the harder each beat will hit. However, they happen less frequently. The more beats you have, the more frequent the beat, but less damage per hit. As you can see here, we have a single damage pulse and we're gonna go ahead and jump into combat. Now, as you can see with this resonator, we've only got one beat going on and it's not dealing damage very frequently. In fact, if we actually get to catch it once, you'll see that it does 188 damage per tick. Now as you can see here, we've inputted in four notes, which deals 47 damage four times, which is basically 188 divided by four. Now as you'll see here, I've actually programmed in eight beats, which end up doing 24 points of damage apiece after rounding. Technically, it's 23.5 that goes into 188 evenly eight times. So basically, feel free to do as you wish with your percussion and your bass, because basically it just determines how often the beats happen. You'll always have a similar damage output. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to melody, it's a little bit less simple than that. So I wanted to go ahead and provide you a little bit of a visual with this beat setup. As you can see, the first two beats are the closest, the next beat is a little bit further away, and then the last beat is spaced the furthest apart. And I want you to keep that in mind because I'm going to provide you a little bit of a visual. All right, so we're going to wait for the first beat to come in, which should be right here. And as you can see, that actually deals 68%. We're going to go ahead and do the second beat now. We got a little bit of a wait because we've spaced them out. And that one does 64%, which is less than the 68%. We're going to go ahead and do the third beat now. Let's take a look at this one. And that one deals 72%. Ah, interesting. And we're going to go ahead and do the last beat right here. And that one deals 76%. Because what it all boils down to is that spacing matters. The more space in between notes, the more percentage you're going to get per squat, I guess we're going to call it. Basically, the more space you have before and after a note, the larger the percentage will become. However, before you get really, really excited and end up only putting one note in your entire melody, keep in mind that the maximum that you can get is 76% per trigger. So you're going to have to at least hit two notes consecutively in order to get an active buff. But, if you're curious, it is 8 open spaces before and 8 open spaces afterwards in order to get the max. So keep that in mind because that could play into certain melodies you want to create. Now we talked about the maximum so I figured we should go ahead and talk about the minimum, which is a 3 note spacing in between each note, which as you can see grants 56% per trigger. Now one of the other things that I mentioned is that you need to hit 2 consecutive notes at a time in order to get a buff. As you can see, we've got 56% set up there, but if I miss a trigger, we drop down to 12. which basically means that no matter what you do, you're still going to have to hit two notes in order to go ahead and get your final buff. Now we've talked a lot about the spacing in between notes, but have yet to talk about stacking notes. We're actually using the same composition as last time, but every other note I did a stacked note. So let's take a look at what that looks like on the battlefield. Now as you can see, stacking notes increases the brightness of each beat, however do keep in mind that no, it does not actually increase the power of each beat, nor does it take away the power of any other beat. So feel free to use note stacking creatively without fear of it in interfering with your min-maxing. Also keep in mind that the more notes you stack, the larger the energy effects become. However, I don't actually feel like it affects the area or radius where you can actually hit that note. But um, I'm really, really bad at rhythm, so you guys let me know if you feel like it does. So when it comes to composition, this is where min-maxing and creativity come to make babies. And I'm going to be honest with you, there is no right and wrong way to do this. However, this is kind of how my brain sets things up. I like to have bar one as kind of like your key simple beat so that you can always hit those notes. Bar two is a little bit of the same, bar three is a little bit of the same, 
bar 4 is where I really like to flourish. However, I've also played around where I do bar 1 as kind of like the key bass beat so that you just hit those beats over and over again, and then you have bar 2 as a flourish, bar 3 as like the key bass beats again, and then bar 4 as another flourish. So that way, you kind of get these beats that you can hit pretty easily, you like know that these are like, these are like my core beats, and then you get the fun little bit, so you can actually hear something that I literally just put together now, so if it sucks, I'm sorry, but this is kind of what I like. So you get the four bass beats that you can go ahead and hit, then you get a little flourish. And you can go ahead and change those bass four beats and play around with the way that they sound and then go ahead and kind of repeat that all the way through. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it sounds like after I've kind of polished it a little bit more. Now after playing around with it, this is what I ended up coming up with. And be aware, I did just like do this all live. This wasn't something that I created ahead of time. So go easy on me. It's really just kind of displaying what you can do with the melody. So. Starting off, we keep things pretty simple with bar 1 and bar 3 so that you can hit all of those notes fairly easily. Then we have the flourish at bar 2 and bar 4. But where it sounds sparse in bar 1 and bar 3, you can really pick things up with bass. So as you can see, the tempo rises and it gets a little bit more exciting, and then we can also go in with a little bit of percussion which just livens the whole thing up. So even though bar one and bar four are a little bit, um, let's just say lean when it comes to the beats, all of the rest of the things kind of layer together and make this, I guess we'll say beautiful sound. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and take this one for a test drive. So straight out of the gate, you can get yourself pretty gosh darn easily. And the thing that I love about it is all of the little flourishes that we have on bar two and bar four kind of give any players who may not necessarily be the greatest at hitting notes a little bit of a, like a broad stroke area where like if you can get kind of in this area, you might get yourself a buffer for the future notes that come out. So um, that pretty much does it for this composition. Let's take a look at a couple others. All right, so the first three songs you're going to hear actually correlate with three different licks that I have going on for my Octavia. And the fourth is just a little bit of fun unfortunately it does take three squats in order to go ahead and get stealth off of the fourth one but the first three you can get them pretty quick all right so the first one i tossed together is called momentum and this one actually goes hand in hand with my rocktavia so let's take a listen so there's bar one here's bar two here is bar three and there is bar four. So if you like that one, you can go ahead and play around with that. Alrighty, so the next one I tossed together is called Incandescent, and this is gonna sound so, so geeky, but this is the kind of music that I picture playing before like a big fight where everybody kind of like gets their munitions together and they have that montage in the movie. Anyway, I'm gonna shut up and I'm just gonna play it and show you how embarrassing I am. So there is bar one, moving on to bar two, here is bar three, and there finally is bar four. So there's that for you. Alrighty, so the last one up is called Warheart, and this goes hand in hand with what I've kind of posted out as my more romantic bard feel. However, in composition, things got a little bit weird, and now a lot of people know this as my murder song. Um, if you listen to just the percussion and the bass, it sounds kind of like a murderer is chasing you down the hall with a knife or something. It like feels like it fits those kind of movies. And then the voices in there, I don't know, add this weird eeriness. So it's less romantic and more murdery. All right, so there is bar one. We are now at bar two. This is bar three. And now we arrive at bar four. So let me know, murdery or not, I don't know, you tell me. All right, so the last one up is called Anthem 80, and this one isn't attached to any kind of look whatsoever. I just kind of wanted to do something a little bit more lighthearted, maybe something a little funkier, because the rest of the songs that I made we're sounding a little bit serious and even slightly murdery. Now, a bit of a heads up, this is gonna take three squats in order to get your invis on. Um, however, you know, that's the price you pay for having a little bit of fun.
So that is bar one. There is bar two. Here is bar three. And now we are at bar four. So a little bit of a change, a little bit of a mix up, but I think it's all good. And that about does it for this episode. I beg of you guys, please go easy on me in the comments below. I am not a professional musician. I am not like a composer extraordinaire. I just wanted to make some easy songs for you guys to groove to. However, I would suggest if you haven't already, be sure to check out Joey Zero's channel because he did his own take on the min-maxing Octavia's music kind of stuff too, and he has much better music than I have and a far different perspective. But that about does it for today. So as always, love somebody. Hurt nobody and touch your body. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.